return to the Psalms. You know, I spent some time last week talking about the Psalms in general and pointing to us to see them both as prayers and hymns and songs. The Psalms, we saw, are a form of poetry. They're artistic, concise, and meant to be performed, or at, le- at the very least, spoken out loud. They make great songs and hymns because of those things, because of those poetic things. And they are frequently put to music, and often when they are shared orally, they are chanted or sung. And as I said, they also make great prayers. Again, they are concise, not that it's a bad thing if our prayers to God aren't concise and to the point, but these words that comprise the Psalms that have been passed down to us also touch on a great deal of material and history, feelings and emotions, that they are a terrific thing for us to use to to deal with that wide range of feelings and emotions that we have in our lives on a daily basis. You know, lots of great theologians have poured a great deal of ink talking about how great a gift the Psalms are to us. For instance, uh, Martin Luther wrote in his introductions to a lot of his writings on the Psalms, this about the book of Psalms. He writes, the Psalter ought to be a precious and beloved book, if for no other reason than this. It promises Christ's death and resurrection so clearly, and pictures his kingdom and the condition and nature of all Christendom, that it might well be called a little Bible, In it is comprehended most beautifully and briefly everything that is in the entire Bible. It is really a fine handbook. In fact, I have a notion that the Holy Spirit wanted to take the trouble himself to compile a short Bible and book of examples to all Christendom or all saints so that anyone who could not read the whole Bible would here have almost anyway, an entire summary of it, comprised in one little book. So these words that compose the book of Psalms when used as our prayer can serve as a prayerful pause in our day. The time that we spend alone or together digesting and meditating on these words also gives us a prayerful pause. Now, there was one thing I mentioned last week that um, I might not have explained very well, and that was regarding the change of voice in the psalm. You know, in the psalm that we read last week, and in the psalm that we'll read tonight, and in many of the psalms, the voice or the point of view or the person speaking tends to change. Often it's the writer's voice, which will serve as our voice, and These are the words and feelings of praise or lament that have come from us. You know, I feel or we feel. But there are often times when we hear God responding to us. Our prayer suddenly becomes a dialogue with the one to whom we are praying. It becomes interactive as we hear God responding to or even challenging some of the things that we say. So with that in mind, I invite us to hear tonight's psalm, which is Psalm 95. And as you are listening, think about who might be speaking those words, because it changes in the middle of the psalm. And I see a lot of you already headed for your hymnals, and the psalms are in the hymnals, and I invite you to open up to them. They're um, in front of all the, uh, the hymns. Again, it's Psalm 95. Hear the words of of the psalmist. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. 
The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, or on that day at Massah in the desert. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Forty years I loathed, loathed that generation, saying, The heart of this people goes astray. They do not know my ways. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. Come, let us sing to the Lord. You know, what a joy-filled psalm we are given. Over the centuries, all the psalms have been put into categories, such as, uh, you know, themes of the psalms. So we have psalms of thanksgiving or psalms of lament, to name a few. Last week, we heard a psalm of ascent, because it's used for journeys or pilgrimages. Tonight, Psalm 95, it's called an enthronement, enthronement psalm. It celebrates the reign of God. We hear things like, the Lord is king. The Lord is a great God, a king above all gods. You know, this and other enthronement songs are are often used at festivals, religious festivals, to celebrate the reign of Yahweh, the reign of God. You know, these festivals would be similar to like our Easter where we shout things like Christ is risen, but we don't do that yet. Well, that doesn't sound very Lenty to me. It often it sounds more like something we should be reading during Easter the season or maybe even Epiphany or Christmas, but not during Lent. And so I wondered why this psalm, Psalm 95, is in Lent. But maybe you noticed in the middle of the psalm the the change of voice. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Kind of says, here comes God's voice. And then we did hear God's voice. And it certainly wasn't as joyful as the first part of the psalm was. In fact, it was rather condemning it was all, but it was in, in meant to be instructive and penitential. Well, God says, listen to me. Don't be like your ancestors who tested me and didn't watch and listen to what I did and said. That sounds a little more like Lent to me. But looking at this psalm as a whole, both pieces together, tells us about the ways that festivals were celebrated in these ancient days. There was great joy and celebration, lots of words of praise and bowing of the knees for uh, for worship of our Creator and Lord. Yet these uh, celebrations also included times that were penitential and reproving. And while we often separate those types of things into different seasons of the church here, like Lent and Easter, our ancestors kept those feelings together. So while we're celebrating and giving thanks, God welcomes and takes those offerings from us. And in the next breath, God reminds us of who we have been and who we are. God spoke in the psalm, reminding the Israelites of times in their history when they tested or disobeyed the Lord. You know, these were brought up as negative examples. You know, don't, don't be like our disobedient ancestors. That generation had witnessed the signs of the plagues or the delivery at the sea, the establishment of the covenant at Sinai, and still they grumbled against the Lord and tested him. Don't do that. Don't in one breath praise and worship God and then turn around and not listen to God. So holding both those things together, that's, that's how our ancestors celebrated and that's how maybe we're called to celebrate this evening. And so I brought questions again. Fair warning, I warned you last week. But I brought questions. And here's the questions I had for you this evening. In the midst of Lent, 
what is it like to celebrate the reign of Jesus? We're not supposed to celebrate, I didn't think. We put away the alleluias. But here in the psalm, we say, come, let us shout to the Lord. So what is it like to celebrate in the midst of Lent? And on the other hand, in the midst of being joyful, what is it like to hear God's words of warning? What is it like to hear God telling us these things to be warned and to be careful? I'd love to hear any feedback on that. Is mic over there? Yeah, I just throw these things at you, I know. I would say it's, it's sobering if you're being joyful and then hear the uh, God's word of warning makes you stop and think, don't lose sight of everything. Yeah. Sobering, it, brings us, it gives us that grounding that we're not just celebrating. And it's a good reminder of that. Either one of the questions. What, what's it like to celebrate in Lent? Feel a little rebellious? Maybe? And here celebrating kind of in the midst of a funeral, the death, the, the death and the life together, sharing those things. What about in the midst of a celebration? In the midst of partying and celebrating and singing and everything, God's voice coming in and saying, hey, don't forget. Paul said it was sobering and grounding. What else? Sorry? A little guilty mixed in, maybe. Do you think, do you think God's intending us to feel guilty? Maybe a tad. Others, do you think God intends for us to feel a little guilty? No? So the commandments of thou shall not kind of fit in there. Do you want to say any more about that, Arlene? Nope. <laughs> Any other thoughts on trying to hold these two things in balance, especially in the midst of Lent? I think one thing in the psalm that it's telling us is that uh, it reminds me of what the book of Proverbs says, that we're to guard our hearts and the Bible's a history of people who didn't do that, and they are a mirror. It's so easy to not guard our heart, and what happens is slowly we become petrified and we become hardened, and 
we can't hear God's voice, and that's an ever-present danger in the culture we live. Well, my prayer for us this evening, in the midst of a prayerful pause, is that in, in our life and in our prayers and in our pauses, that we can be mindful of, of celebrating that reign of Christ in our lives, worshiping him because of that, and still being open to hearing what our ancestors and, and what God are saying to us. And I'll invite you this coming Sunday as you hear this psalm to, to hold those things in tension and hold those things in tension throughout the week and then throughout worship on Sunday. And also to hear how God being our rock maybe ties into other things. But that is my prayer for you this evening. And so as the psalm says, come let us sing to the Lord. And why don't we join together in um, saying the psalm uh, responsively, and then we will sing our hymn together. So together, um, I will say the odd number of verses, and you all re respond with the even number of verses. So come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Indeed, I swore in my anger. They shall never come to my rest. This is the word of the Lord. We all say, thanks be to God. I invite us to stand and join in singing hymn.